Why do you look like that? Why do you look like that? Is it in devices, maybe? Hello? Uh, this is not what I wanted to be doing. Hello writers, readers, and everyone in between. My name is Des, though I write under the name Zed Caster. With us well into December, you're likely getting ready to pull out that shopping list for the holidays. And if you're watching this video, that probably means that you have a writer or reader on that list. And whether you're here with no ideas or looking for something outside of the box, I may have exactly what you're looking for. I'll be going over 20 different ideas to get for that special bookish person in your life. Ranging from the low end to the high end, there's gonna be something here for everyone and for every budget. So, come along. We're gonna start with the low end category. This is gonna be anything under $20. The first thing I wanna talk about is Aquanotes. Writers tend to come up with some pretty great ideas at the most inconvenient of times. One of those times being in the shower when you can't have anything to write with. So Aqua Notes is something you can slap on the inside of your shower and write down little notes with while you're there. It doesn't get damaged or wet because it's made for the shower. Number two is blue light glasses. This is kind of self-explanatory. Staring at a screen all day, especially if they also have a desk job, like I do, and streaming. Why do I do this to myself? Number three is a little mini Zen garden. Typically these are pretty small and you can keep them right on your desk and it serves as a really great way to find your Zen while you're trying to work on your manuscript because we all need a little Zen at that point. Everybody likes socks. So fun writer socks, especially in bonus points if they're related to their current manuscript. Number five is a writing prompt journal. You can pretty much find these anywhere on the internet, especially on Amazon. They're not too terribly expensive and you can usually find them within a pretty large range as far as price goes. Next is number six for fingerless gloves. This might sound weird, but especially during the winter seasons, typing away and your hands are just cold and naked and just in a cold room with nothing to put on them while you're typing. Fingerless gloves can help with that. Number seven is rocket book. This I found recently actually, and it can go from pretty fairly cheap to very much on the high end. This is a journaling or note-taking thing. I've never used it, but I've heard pretty good things about it. Next is the mid-range category. And of course, the first thing I'm going to recommend is the Clever Fox Planner. I use this every day. It has hour by hour, it has day by day, it has a bunch of different features that are included in the Clever Fox. I definitely recommend checking them out. Number nine is the Artist of Life Workbook. This workbook operates similarly to the Clever Fox Planner, except it's not a planner, it's, uh, it's a workbook, obviously. It has prompts, guidelines, and different ways for that writer in your life to expand their horizons as far as writing goes. And if they're working on a new story, this journal might be just what they need to help flesh out that plot line. Number 10 is a very fancy pen. The first one that comes to mind when I think of this is the Scrivener pen. It's a fancy pen. I don't know what else to tell you. Writers like fancy pens. Number 11 is a laptop desk, a butt pillow, or a neck pillow. All of these things are going to help make your writer have a lot more comfort when they're working on their manuscript. Number 12 is a personalized book stamp. Now, this is completely unnecessary for your average writer or reader, but it makes things fancy. We like fancy things. It is but another way for them to mark their territory, especially with their most precious item, books. That way, in case they load them out to anybody, they can prove that they were theirs. Can't tell you how many books I've lost over the years. Number 13 is Roll for Plot Dice. I found these on Etsy recently and they look so cool. It is but another fun way for writers to practice their craft. Or if they're just indecisive, which tends to happen with writers. Anyways, number 14 is the Creative Block. And no, this is not the same thing as Writer's Block. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It has over a hundred different prompts for story starters and getting unstuck in the middle of that tricky scene in your manuscript. I.e. the opposite of writer's block. The creative block. <laughs> Number 14 is a temperature controlled mug. Now these typically can range between the mid range to high range, so take your pick with that. But of course, stay within your shopping budget. Nobody needs to be going into the red this season, please. A temperature controlled mug is going to keep that coffee, tea, hot chocolate, whatever warm beverage they're drinking warm while they forget about it on the counter or on the coffee table while they're reading or writing because it will have happened, it has happened, it is, I've lost so much tea this way. Number 15 is books. Need I say more? <laughs> if you have a bookish person in your life, they have likely told you exactly what books they want 
or they at least have a list. Just ask them for that list. And if you want to get really fancy, you can even get them a couple of books if you have that kind of budget, which is where it becomes more on the high end. You can make them a book basket, a book bouquet, a book advent calendar. I would really love it if one of my friends, anyone, would make me one of these. They're so cute. I've been seeing them all over the place. Regardless, we're in the high end now. Number 16 is a comfy writing chair. You can really go anywhere with this. And honestly, they probably have a specific chair in mind that they would be like, oh yes, this is perfect. I would love to read in this. In, in a cozy little corner with my temperature controlled mug and my book bouquet and just my cats upon my lap. It, it, there's, there's, they have it. They have it already in their mind. Ask them. Number 17 is something that I find highly entertaining that probably wouldn't really help your writer but they would love it all the same. And that is Writer Tears Whiskey. It's alcohol, need I say more? This was actually pretty hard to find on the internet, so I included a link for you, but it's just, it's funny. It's a funny gag gift, if anything else. Number 18 is the Remarkable Note-Taking Tablet. This is definitely on the higher end, but it looks really cool. I've never tried it myself, but I've heard pretty good things about it. It's similar to the previous journal thing I had mentioned, but it's, it's, it's better. It's, 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 it's nice. It's, it's, it's a tablet. You can write on it. It's just so cool. There are a number of different things in this high end, but it's, it's likely you might not have that kind of, of coin, especially in this economy. Let's be honest with ourselves. And in fact, you might not have any money at all to buy anything, which I have anticipated, such as fan art of their work. If you have a writer that is currently working on a, a piece, nothing is more validating than receiving like artwork of their, of their work, especially if they already have like some art that they, that they uh, like a Pinterest board or something. You just, just take that and run with it. Just, just make anything. It could be fan art. It could be, it could be fan fiction. If you're also a writer and if they they are actively writing and they are trying to write and not be interrupted because people don't know that they're writing or maybe you just simply forgot even that they have their door closed. Make them a sign! <laughs> Something that they can put on their door that lets the rest of the people in their home know, hey, I'm writing. So please don't interrupt me because my, my brain juice and my creative bones are extremely fickle. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to put in here, because this is kind of just like a little extra one for you, is a snack or subscription box. Everyone loves snacks! Food is so good, especially if you know what kind of snacks they are, or, or you could also do like a tea subscription box, like a coffee box, you could go any number of ways with this. If you know what they like to consume, there is a subscription box for it. <laughs> These typically can range anywhere between the low end and the high end, so take with that what you will. If you don't have a whole lot of time, this would be a great option for you. <laughs> Regardless, at the end of the day, whatever you decide to get for that special book lover in your life, they're going to love it, especially if you put a little bit of time and effort into it. Oh, good lord, that was corny. I hope this little list helped you decide what you're going to get for that bookish person in your life, whether they are a writer, a reader, or anybody in between. Good luck on the shopping and try not to go over your budget. Happy writing. And happy holidays, of course. Bye! I should have wrote a script. I should have... I should have written a script. <laughs> <clears throat> My camera's dying. <sighs> it has over a hundred different prompts for writing and all sorts of other things. No. It has over a hundred prompts for writers and just general. God dang it. This is harder than I thought it would be.